Hello everyone, welcome to God's Med. My name is Godwin and today I will be teaching glycolysis in biochemistry. Okay, so glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose molecule into pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule or into lactates. So um, this um, depends on the availability of oxygen in the body. Okay, now glycolysis is the major um, um, pathway for ATP synthesis in cells that are lacking mitochondria, such as the erythrocytes, um, the cornea, and the lens. Now, um, glycolysis is also called the ebden meyerhofs pathway. Let me put them down here. Eb ebden meyerhof pathway. All right. Okay. So. In um in our human body, food is always broken down to, broken down to glucose, and now this glucose have to be transported into the cytoplasm of the cell for glycolysis to occur. Um, glycolysis, which means that glycolysis now occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so this glucose is transported by um glucose transporters. Okay, glucose transporters. So I'm going to abbreviate this glucose transporters as GLUTs. So a different type of glucose transporters in the human body. Okay, good. So we have glucose transporter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and glucose transporter 7. Okay, glucose transporter 1, let me write it here. Glucose transporter 1 is found in the brain, specifically the blood brain barrier. It's also found in the red blood cells. Red blood cells is found also in the retina. It's found in the placenta and also found in the colon. In the colon. Then glucose transporter 2. Here it is found in the liver. It is found in the kidney. It is found also in the pancreatic beta cells. Pancreatic beta cells. Then glucose transporter 3. This glucose transporter 3 is found now in the intestine. In the intestine, it's um it is also found in the um, brain. It is found in the neurons. Okay, and sometimes in the placenta also. Alright, then glucose transporter 4 is found in the skeletal muscles, skeletal muscles, and also in adipocytes. Okay, then glucose transporter 5 is found in the small intestine. Small intestine is found um, in the testes and the sperm. Okay. Then glucose transporter 7 is found in the liver and the plasmic reticulum. Okay, so these are the glucose transporters in the human body and where they are found. Okay, so these glucose transporters transport glucose from, um, from the body into the cytoplasm of the cell, okay, for glycolysis to occur. All right, so glycolysis has two major phases. It has the aerobic phase and the anaerobic phase, okay? As I said earlier, depending on the availability of oxygen, and at the end, ATP is always produced. But in anaerobic phase, a little amount of um, ATP is produced in anaerobic phase, okay? So um, I'm going to clean these um, glucose transporters and where they are found, okay? I'm going to clean it now. So we go into glycolysis properly. So now, let's talk about glycolysis properly. So as I said earlier, glucose transporters transport glucose into the cytoplasm of the cell for glycolysis to occur. And um, if the glucose is being transported from the um, muscles, or it's, it has to be what the glucose transporter for is from the liver glucose transporter two, okay? So they transport glucose 
into the cytoplasm of the cell. So let's just start with glucose since we know um, what transports this glucose and where they are found. Remember, glucose transporter 4 is um, an insulin dependent glucose transporter. So it is dependent on insulin and also it is um, also dependent on SSI. So during activity, glucose um, transporter 4 transports glucose uh, in exercises. Okay, so glucose here is transported into the cytoplasm of the cell and it is broken down to glucose 6-phosphate. Actually, it is phosphorylated into glucose 6-phosphate. This stage is an irreversible step, an irreversible step. So I use the red pen for it, an irreversible step because it is highly regulated. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called hexokinase. If it is found in the muscle cells and glucokinase, if it is found in the liver cells. So the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called hexokinase or glucokinase in the liver, glucokinase. All right, glucokinase sometimes, okay, you can also call glucokinase hexokinase 4, hexokinase 4, okay. All right, so what will happen here? I think glucose is phosphorylated into glucose 6, into glucose 6 phosphate. Into glucose 6 phosphate. So this, this phosphate group that is phosphorylated, the carbon 6, of glucose is coming off from the breakdown of ATP ATP into ADP into ADP so the phosphate group is coming off from ATP and is phosphorylating the carbon C's of um, glucose to give glucose C's phosphates you know from the diagram of um, glucose let me put that here diagram of, of glucose we have uh, um, okay from here. Okay, remember. Okay, it is phosphorylating the carbon cis. Okay, of this glucose one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this glucose is phosphorylating this carbon six here. Okay. So the ATP here, the phosphate group is actually phosphorylating the carbon six here. So this is this is it. All right. So this is the phosphate group that is coming up from what the breakdown of ATP to ADP. So it loses the phosphate group and it phosphorylates carbon six of um of glucose. All right. So now glucose um six phosphate will now undergo isomerization, okay? It will be isomerized. It will be isomerized into fructose, fructose, cis phosphate. Fructose cis phosphate. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called phosphohexose isomerase. Phosphohexose isomerase catalyzes this reaction, the isomerization of glucose phosphate into fructose phosphate. This stage, um, this is an um, a, a, a reversible reaction. Okay, so it can go forward and backwards. All right. So it means this enzyme can also catalyze the forward and backward reaction. All right. So now the next stage is the um, phosphorylation of fructose phosphate into fructose one cis bisphosphate. Okay. Now. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called phosphofructokinase 1. Okay, phosphofructokinase 1. This is an irreversible reaction. So I'm going to put that down in red. I'm going to put that down in red. Since it's an irreversible reaction because these um, stages are highly regulated. Okay, they are highly regulated. So it's an irreversible reaction. All right. So it converts into fructose, fructose one cis bisphosphate. Fructose one cis bisphosphate. All right. As I said earlier, phosphofructokinase catalyzes this reaction. Okay, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate it as 
phosphofructokinase BFK, photofructokinase 1. All right. In rare occasions, in rare occasions, a little amount of fructose phosphate undergoes a minor pathway to give fructose to cis base phosphate. Okay, so I'm going to clean this now. So in rare occasions, this fructose phosphate undergoes a minor pathway. Okay, a minor pathway to give fructose to cis base phosphate. Okay. So I'm going to talk more about this fructose 2 cis base phosphate under regulation of glycolysis. So the enzyme here is phosphofructokinase 2. Okay, I'm write it. Photofructokinase 2. Okay. Now I'm going to talk more about photofructokinase 2, kinase 1, and the under regulation of glycolysis. Now, the next step here, remember. Stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3 are known as the preparatory stage, okay? So from stage 1 and stage 5, we call this is the splitting stage. So fructose 1 cis bis phosphate will be split. Remember, before we go into the splitting part, remember, since this is phosphofructokinase 1, which means um, um, a phosphate group is phosphorylating the carbon 1 of fructose 6 1, um, fructose 6 phosphates, and this is coming off from breakdown of ATP, ATP to ADP. All right. Remember, this breakdown it requires um, um, magnesium ion. Okay. Let us, let's not forget that it requires magnesium ion. Magnesium ion. All right. All right. So this is the splitting stage now. Okay. Fructose one cis base phosphate. Um, is split into two molecules. First molecule is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and the second molecule is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. All right, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called aldolase. Aldolase catalyzes the splitting of fructose 1 cis with phosphate to DHAP and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Then the next step here is the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called phosphotriose isomerase phosphotriose isomerase so phosphotriose isomerase phosphotriose isomerase remember there was initially one molecule of Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So the um, conversion of dihydroxyacetone of um, isomerization of the um, DHAP to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate gives us two molecules now of glyceraldehyde 3 um, phosphate. Okay? Alright. So this stage 5 and stage 6 is known as a splitting stage or splitting phase. Alright. So this takes us to the next stage. Okay? Remember, this stage can go forward and backwards. Okay, don't forget that. They can go forward and backwards. Okay, they can go forward and backwards. All right. So, the next stage now is the um, um, dehydrogenation and phosphorylation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3 Base phosphoglycerate. Okay? And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. So the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase. What this enzyme does is it does actually two things. First of all, um, NAD, okay, NAD, it reduces NAD because since it's a dehydrogenase enzyme, it requires coenzyme nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, okay? So here, here, NAD is reduced to NADH, okay? I'm write that in, in the red pen. NAD, remember, it is two NAD since we're having two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. 2 NAD positive is reduced into 
to N A D H. All right. All right. So nicotinamide at the end the nucleotide positive, okay, releases what? Um, a hydride. I told you it is what? Dehydrogenation and what? Um, simultaneous phosphorylation, which means that a phosphate group is also added in this in this part, okay? Remember, this is glycerol dehydrate phosphate. So, um, a phosphate group is added to what phosphorylates um, um, this compound to give 1, 3, um, by phosphoglycer rate. All right, so here there's an addition of a phosphate group. Okay, so this enzyme also add a phosphate group here. So let me put that in the blue and uh, green pen. All right. So the next step here, remember this stage is also a reversible step. It's also a reversible step. So the next step here is now the conversion of 1,3-base phosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate. Um, so I'm going to write, um, write it here now. Okay, let me clean off this. Let me clean off this. All right. So I'm going to um, take this up here. 1,3-base-phosphoglycerate. Glycerate okay, will be broken down now, okay, into three phosphoglycerates. All right, something really interesting happens here, okay, because ATP is generated in this part, okay. Now, the energy trapped by one three base phosphoglycerate now will be um, ripped off, okay? Will be ripped off, and this um, yields ATP, okay? Remember, for ATP to be yield in the body, it has to undergo the Krebs cycle, then the electron transport chain, okay, to yield energy. But here, it doesn't have to undergo through this, uh, through these processes to yield energy. This is an example of what? Substrate level phosphorylation. So, 1,3-base phosphoglycerate is phosphorylated to what? So three phosphoglycerate. So this is substrate level phosphorylation, and energy is yielded in these parts. Okay, energy is yielded in these parts. Since it is phosphorylated, which means um, ADP is converted to what ATP. Okay, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called base phosphoglycerate kinase or one three base phosphoglycerate kinase. Okay. That's the enzyme that catalyzes this, this reaction, okay? Phosphoglycerate kinase. Kinase. Okay, you can also call it 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate kinase, okay? Remember, remember, there are two molecules of glycerate, two phosphates, which means what? There are two molecules of what? ADP and two of ATP. All right. So the next step here is um, the um, um, conversion of three phosphoglycerate into two phosphoglycerates. Okay, into two phospho two phosphoglycerates, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is phosphoglycerate mutase. Phosphoglycerate mutase. So, um, phospho, phosphoglycerate mutase shifts the phosphate group, okay, on this phosphoglycerate, shifts it toward carbon 2 instead of carbon 3. Like, um, an example is this, okay. Remember, um, uh, in this structure, okay, okay, in this structure, this is what will happen. This is phosphoglycerate, um, 
three. Okay, three phosphoglycerate. Okay. Now, what will happen is now this enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase kind of shifts it like in you know medical biology, you it's called, called a mutation. Okay, what really happens shifts um um this um phosphate from carbon three into carbon two. So it shifts it like this into um COO this and so it shifts from carbon three to carbon two. So yeah, we will have the phosphate group here, and here we have this here. All right. So this is what really happens. So the shifting of the phosphate group from carbon three into carbon two is what this um, enzyme actually does. Okay. So let me clean it off now. All right. Remember, this stage is also um, irreversible reaction. This is also irreversible reaction. Okay. Irreversible reaction. All right. The next stage here is the um, conversion of 2 phosphoglycerate into a very interesting enzyme called PEP. Okay. I abbreviate it as, as PEP because this is called phenol, um, phosphoenol pyruvate. Okay. Phosphoenol pyruvate. So 2 phosphoglycerate converts is converted into what an enol all right remember uh, um, an example of an enol is um <coughs> let's say this um, having double bonds to um the yes so <coughs> so after the double bond we have what an alcohol group attached to this okay so this is an example of an enol okay now what really happens here is <coughs> This 2 phosphoglycerate now is converted to an enol, okay, phosphoenol pyruvate. So here, this uh, phosphate is added to this part of. So this is actually ripped off here, and we have um, this and this, all right, phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate. So, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called enolase okay and enolase okay now enolase requires magnesium ion okay magnesium ion just like this requires the magnesium ion okay requires magnesium ion so in the absence of magnesium ion okay fluoride irreversibly binds to this enolase thereby preventing what the process of glycolysis okay now this is very important in the estimation of um, blood in the um, sugar in the blood okay because when we take blood for sugar level estimation fluoride or sodium fluoride is always added to this blood so that it irreversibly binds to enolase to stop the process of glycolysis if this is not added then the level of sugar estimated will be actually incorrect okay will be incorrect so that is why fluoride is always added to it. So this enzyme requires magnesium ion. Okay. All right. So the next stage here is a very important stage and it's highly regulatory. This is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate. Into pyruvate. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase catalyzes this reaction. Whenever you hear kinase, which means there is um, a phosphor relation. Okay, it means there is a phosphor relation. So here, ADP is what converted to what ATP. Converted to ATP. Remember, it's two molecules of what. ADP and two molecules of ATP. All right. So this is the step. Now the next stage here now is the conversion of pyruvate. Depending on the availability of oxygen in the human body, pyruvate can be converted into lactate or it can be converted into acetyl CoA depending on the availability of oxygen. So here, depending on the availability of oxygen. Pyruvate can be converted to what? 
First of all, it can be converted to lactate or it can be converted to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl Alright, so when oxygen is not um, in, um, in much abundance, it is converted to lactate. And when it's much abundant, it's converted to um, acetyl-CoA. But we're not going to talk about this, okay? We are not as I'm um, focused on the anaerobic stage of glycolysis, the anaerobic phase of glycolysis. So pyruvate is converted to lactate by an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase. Okay. Now, this lactate dehydrogenase, I told you the dehydrogenase enzyme requires what coenzyme NAD and NADH. Look at now. Look at from stage um, 6 here. Yeah? I mean, yeah. Yeah, stage 6 or stage 4 or stage 5 here. Yeah? Look at now. Remember, um, this reaction requires NAD. So for other processes of glycolysis to occur, this NAD must what? Must be regenerated. Okay? So what really happens here is that NAD is regenerated in this stage. Is regenerated in this stage. Okay. So the, this actually have kind of a coupling effect, like a coupling effect, because NADH, NAD is regenerated. Remember. All right. So here, NADH is reconverted into NAD positive okay making nad positive to be available in the cytoplasm for um this um this stage of glycolysis to occur again all right now um lactate dehydrogenase have its own clinical significance okay because lactate dehydrogenase have five isoenzymes it has five isoenzymes Okay, you have lactate dehydrogenase 1, dehydrogenase 2, 3, 4, and 5. Lactate dehydrogenase 1, all right, um, let me write it here. Yeah, yeah, where will I write it? Okay, let me write it here. All right. Lactate dehydrogenase 1, let me use the, the red pen. Lactate dehydrogenase 1. Is found in the heart, so it is found in the heart. It is found in um, the red blood cells, red blood cells. So an increased level of lactate dehydrogenase one signifies okay, there might be myocardial infarction, okay, myocardial infarction or diseases related to the red blood cells such as anemias. It's lactate dehydrogenase two. This lactate dehydrogenase two is found in the leukocytes leukocytes is also found in the red blood in little amount in the red blood cells red blood cells okay so um increased level of lactate dehydrogenase 2 signifies uh maybe this is related to the um leukocytes or percutaneous or um hemolytic anemias for the red blood cell and um lactate dehydrogenase 3 it is found in the lungs Okay, and increased level of it um, in um, the lactate um, dehydrogenase panel may show, uh, may signify, um, let's say, pulmonary embolism. Okay, pulmonary embolism. All right, so lactate dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase 4. Let me clean this off first. Lactate dehydrogenase 4. Lactate dehydrogenase 4 is found also in the leukocytes. It's found in the leukocytes. It's found in the pancreas. Pancreas. Okay. All right. So it is also found in the kidneys. So an increased level of it may signify this is related to the leukocyte, pancreas, and kidneys, such as pancreatitis and um, kidney diseases. All right, so um, lactate dehydrogenase 5, okay? This lactate dehydrogenase 5 is also very, very important, okay? It's very, very important and it's found in the liver, 
okay it's found in the liver and it's found also in the muscles skeletal muscles okay skeletal muscles and um, an increased level of it in the um, lactate um, dehydrogenase panel may show maybe liver problems related to the liver like liver cirrhosis or muscular dystrophy all right so this is the clinical importance of lactate dehydrogenase so when we um a patient like um, a patient in the hospital has uh, an increased level of lactate which means what anaerobic respiration is occurring in the cells okay that means the person is, is not having uh, much of oxygen and this may lead to lactic acidosis okay it may lead to lactic acidosis and um though most lactic acidosis that's related, um, found in von Keck's disease may not be that um, life-threatening but if it is not actually corrected immediately it can lead to death all right so the amount of oxygen actually required for a, um, a, um, a patient suffering from lactic acidosis to recover is actually called the oxygen depth okay it's actually called the oxygen depth and it's very very important so that we can know okay the amount of oxygen required for a patient to recover all right so this is um the um process of glycolysis all right so in the next um video i'll be making um regulation of glycolysis i'm making a video on regulation of glycolysis all right so uh, please um subscribe to my youtube channel and leave a comment in the comment section and please like and share